on uh, ET Now. We're coming to you from the ET Now newsroom in Mumbai. Uh, and we've just closed out the markets. Uh, so thought, uh, give our viewers as always, some perspective on how trade panned out. Uh, this afternoon, the markets may have closed flat, but you had uh, geopolitical tensions in North Korea firing another missile, which landed in uh, um, the Japanese Sea. Uh, you had uh, great cues coming in from the U.S. Uh, on the back of Jerome Powell, the new Fed chairman's uh, comments that he believes the financial sector in the U.S. Uh, is, um, or can do actually, with some deregulation uh, in lending norms, which were imposed on the entire financial space uh, way back during the, uh, uh, the credit crisis that is. So uh, positive cues coming in from the US markets, most of Asia shrugging off geopolitical tensions uh, and which is by on balance the markets closed absolutely flat uh, you know, on the index. Uh, but a slew of uh, stock specific activity was observed uh, um, on individual names. You had uh, Coal India rally, Macquarie's come out with an upgrade on the stock believing that uh, the second half coal volumes uh, picture would look very robust, uh, very promising. Uh, and so Coal India was uh, most active in the session. Uh, then you saw traction uh, in uh, you know names from um, the IT basket, some, some of the pharmaceutical names did okay. Uh, there was a fair amount of interest uh, uh, coming in for some of the banks on the index. On the flip side, however, it's really been uh, an off day for metals. They continue to trend lower. I remember somebody asking me, and I'm awaiting questions from our uh, followers and viewers. Uh, I remember somebody asking me yesterday, the day before, um, you know, about sale and how the traction has been uh, on that one. But again, today I was noticing how sale has come down to a level of 78 bucks per share and continues to trend lower. That's largely been uh, associated with, uh, you know, commodities in general and commodity related stocks uh, seeing um, a reverse trend. Okay, uh, Abhijit puts in a question on uh, Hi Tanvir, what do you think of uh, the idea of Vodafone merger? Will it be good for the business? How will it reflect on the stock price? Well, Abhijit, after the initial spike um, for, to a level of 110, I think it went up to about 120 uh, on, for idea when uh, the merger was announced. The stock has retracted considerably. It's in fact started its move from, uh, you know, in anticipation of that deal coming through from a level of 70 odd, I remember. And I think it's. Uh, uh, come out, uh, pretty much come back uh, to that uh, level. So I think the market is settling in that you know this merger will take its own time. Uh, and in the mean, uh, in the meanwhile, you've seen the industry do its bit. Uh, competition, of course, is beefing up, and RELG is not making things easy for the incumbents. Uh, so most of the fundamental um, analysts that we've spoken to believe uh, that the one who will be able to withstand the competition and the pressures coming in. Uh, from RELGEO would be Bharti Airtel as, uh, um, as, as a strong incumbent. And we've seen a slew of brokerage reports uh, being quite bullish on Bharti. Um, Idea and Vodafone, we'll have to see how it plays out, but I, I think the market has become more realistic in its estimates and what the combine uh, would do for the business going forward. Um, we have um, uh, Aniket uh, asking about views um, on insurance, uh, HGFC Life, SBI, ICICI proof for, for the long term. Uh, Aniket, we've had most uh, um, of our uh, fundamental guests on the show talk about insurance at length. Um, insurance, of course, as a sector, is uh, is you know really something that you need to play for the long haul. It's um, you know India is an underinsured country, so there's a fair amount of scope and scale for growth. Uh, and these are the three names uh, where where you know one would expect that there would be enough traction coming in, uh, as in when uh, these businesses. Uh, uh, penetrate deeper into the economy and into uh, you know different cities, into different regions. So be mindful of that. Uh, it's a hot sector. Uh, it's a sector that made a lot of money for uh, Warren Buffett, uh, the legendary investor in the U.S. It's a sector which is uh, uh, on the cusp of an inflection. Uh, however, what you need to be wary of when you uh, you know consult uh, experts on, on whether or not to invest within the insurance space is um, the valuation uh, at which these stocks are coming. We've already seen HDFC Life after the listing uh, spurt quite handsomely in trade and deliver good returns in its first few sessions on, on the bourses. SBI Life, ICICI Pro, I, I remember ICICI Pro also having done fairly well um, into the initial uh, few days uh, from its listing. So you need to be careful about valuations, but as a sector, uh, and if you're asking me about the outlook for the space, I mean, you would know it uh, as well, that things are looking up for the insurance space, uh, uh, and the government's focus there is also fairly strong. Okay, um, Puneet is asking about a view on Tata Chemicals um, and Tata Alexi over the next six months. Uh, uh, Puneet, I, 
so if my memory serves me right you know tata chemicals um has part of its business uh, in specialty chemicals but they are also i think uh, positioning themselves as a consumer oriented company uh, and i think that transition is very interesting for tata chemicals uh, which is why a lot of people on the street are monitoring um, how uh, successfully they are able to uh, move their business or change the business around um, uh, to take advantage of uh, the robust consumer theme in india so be mindful of of that change and i think that's where uh, the potential of value uh, may accrue um, for their earnings going forward uh, uh, that's the only uh, bit that i recall on tata chemicals as of now uh, okay uh, want to also know about uh, okay shridhar has put in a question can case international be expected to go up further after its recent good run um, technicals are suggesting that there is some traction so if you hear kunal botra dr c k narayan as well as uh, manoj jaiswal on the channel uh, i think a couple of days they have recommended uh, uh, you know a, a positive outlook on kc international uh, again it depends on their order um, order book position and their execution capabilities i think they have a decent track record uh, but just remember one thing shridhar i'm telling this to every uh, one of our followers that uh, you know we are um, higher up on valuations so taking a fresh investment call needs to be really uh, thought through uh, they should be a value adjusted return buys that one must see in any one of uh, the stock specific investments that one makes uh, and not that to say that you know the market is not going to go up from here but one needs to exercise caution and be be more rational about uh, investing uh, at these levels uh, Firdaus has asked about Colte Patel and Brigade Enterprises. Uh, Firdaus, you know that yesterday uh, Colte Colte Patel uh, was fairly active. That's been the case with all of the real estate uh, um, names, even in today, today's session. Um, I remember how we had Peninsula Land, we had uh, Sobha Limited, and some of the other uh, uh, real estate names as well. The whole basket has been uh, moving up. Uh, in fact, many uh, analysts and experts were very circumspect about the real estate space. Uh, at the start of 2017 but with uh, you know the riding wave uh, in the market uh, these sectors have also this sector particularly has also benefited so all of the real estate stocks have done well uh, when i had spoken with monish pabrai earlier on uh, during uh, my diwali special he had highlighted that there is still scope uh, and there's opportunity in the uh, you know um, marky real estate uh, developers uh, with a good track record with uh, uh, good uh, Uh, execution capabilities and a decent cash flow um, outlook so uh, keeping with uh, keeping it with a good quality real estate developers uh, would serve uh, investors well but you need to take a call uh, looking at the company's track record uh, on what the potential uh, seems like here uh, but like i said the whole sector is enjoying uh, a bout of uh, buying interest so uh, you need to keep that on board so a lot of the i remember the, uh, uh, you know these were badgered out of shape uh, all of the real estate stocks were pretty much uh uh you know uh, they had pretty much seen a significant amount of selling pressure trading at multi year lows uh, i think a decade low until about last year so from there there has been that uh, uh, correction so to speak as well uh, in the bounce back uh, some of them have seen uh, a technical bounce back some of them have been um, uh, rallying on the back of fundamental changes and of course with the real estate regulator coming in which is rera uh, things are expected to get streamlined in the business Uh, which will help uh, in um, uh, again improving the operational efficiencies and execution capabilities of some of the uh, good quality real estate players so i remember monish pabra had highlighted that these stocks have run ahead so taking a call on investing now would really be uh, you know uh, depending on your risk profile but he had highlighted how he had uh, invested in suntech realty and colte patel and he had been pretty much ahead of the curve and that had served well for him okay um Puneet is asking even after good results why is Kerala healthcare in a downtrend Puneet uh, with healthcare uh, and the whole pharma space i think it's not a linear call that um, you know the entire sector will do well uh, i think uh, the part of the correction despite good results has all to also been due to the uh, overhang coming in from the US FDA so be mindful of that i mean pharma is not the sector which is um, you know uh, completely um uh, devoid of any sort of bad news so as you would look at the screen and watch it now every single day you would know that you know some of the other pharma companies issued a form 483 you know they are 
uh, data integrity issues or some sort of compliance is missing. So if you track the news flow on that front, uh, you'd be able to get a better handle on uh, you know, what impact it is having on various companies and their uh, revenue streams. And that will give you some clarity on whether uh, or not you want to stay with Cadilla Healthcare at this point in time. Uh, you know, a correction after the recent earnings uh, uh, was pretty much on the cards and I think that's what uh, has happened uh, with uh, Cadilla. Uh, Debussy's is asking about uh, Tech Mahindra. Uh, the IT space, uh, Debussy's, and the important part over there is uh, Tech Mahindra, of course, as you would know, has uh, its biggest exposure to its client uh, in uh, UK, which is BT. But um, aside of that, you know, it's not about a particular technology company. I think when you look at a lot of mutual fund portfolios, and you should do that, uh, and see the top 10 holdings uh, of a lot of uh, the large cap, mid cap uh, mutual fund portfolios, you will see that, you know, uh, the defensive bet is all, always taken with enforcers, despite what's happened on the leadership um, uh, transition uh, for the business, um, and perhaps DCS. I don't really see Tech Mahindra among the top two, three holdings coming in from the IT space, uh, as far as my memory serves me, right? Uh, uh, I've scanned through a lot of mutual fund portfolios and large cap uh, mutual funds, essentially. Uh, it's either been Enforcers, TCS, or even HCL Tech, uh, given that you know there's a value-adjusted uh, bias there with all of these uh, stocks uh, trading at 13, 12, 13, 14 times one-year forward earnings. I don't think there's as much optimism around Tech Mahindra. Uh, I think the market perceives them to have a skewed business model, but who knows, you know, things can turn around. So uh, be mindful of the change there uh, and um, take a call accordingly. Well, with that, I come to the end of uh, this Facebook Live. I'm sorry I could not take all your questions, but I'll come back tomorrow again at 4 o'clock uh, to get you as much perspective as possible uh, on uh, the global market uh, picture uh, and how that would impact um, sentiment in India as well. Thanks very much for watching this Facebook Live.